Ever heard of a situation where kidnapped hostages didn't want to be saved? Instead, they helped the kidnappers escape and even fell in love with them. Sounds like a movie plot, right? But it happens in real life too. It's called Stockholm Syndrome. Welcome to the Dark Psychology World Channel where we dive into such fascinating topics. If you're interested, keep reading. Don't forget to subscribe and consider becoming a channel member to support us. Now, let's get to it. Stockholm Syndrome is when victims develop feelings for their captors. They sympathize with them, adopt their views, and sometimes even assist them. Imagine a kidnapped person not hating their kidnapper but defending them or helping them avoid punishment. This is also known as the hostage complex. To understand Stockholm Syndrome, let's look at a famous hijacking incident in Sweden. A small-time crook named Eric Olsen, who was serving time for theft, admired a fellow inmate, a bank robber named Clark Olofsson. To avoid confusion, let's call the bank robber Fursen and the small-time crook Ausen. Ausen was so fascinated by Fursen's bank robberies that when he got a short break from jail, a common practice in Sweden to check if the person is still a threat to society, he decided not to return. Instead, he planned a bank robbery in Stockholm's Olsen Square on August 23, 1973, to help his idol, Farsen, escape. Ausen wore a mask, fired a submachine gun at the ceiling, and took four bank employees hostage. The police arrived soon but didn't storm the building due to the hostage's safety. Ausen demanded three million Swedish kronor, a getaway car, and Farsen. The standoff lasted for 130 hours, or five days, attracting global media attention. Finally, the police used tear gas, and Ausen and Fursen surrendered. But the four hostages did something incredible. They didn't thank the police, instead, they seemed dissatisfied with them. They felt the police would have shot them, not the robbers. They even refused to cooperate with the police investigation or testify against Ausen and Fursen in court. Now, that's Stockholm Syndrome for you. This case made it really tough for investigators. What's even more surprising is that the hostages set up a fund to hire a top-notch lawyer to defend the robbers and get them off the hook. One of the female hostages even fell in love with one of the robbers during the five-day ordeal and decided to marry him. This case was all over the news and most people knew about it. But the outcome left everyone scratching their heads. Why would a victim who was clearly kidnapped not feel anger or hostility? Instead, they sided with the kidnappers and even fell in love with them. This was the first time this kind of situation was discovered, and it's why it's called Stockholm Syndrome. Because everyone was so puzzled, criminal psychology experts were brought in to study it. Turns out, Stockholm Syndrome has five characteristics. One, the victim identifies with the reasons the perpetrator committed the crime. Two, the victim genuinely feels their life is threatened by the perpetrator. Three, the victim feels a small act of kindness from the perpetrator is a big deal. 4. The victim can't get information from the outside world other than what the perpetrator tells them. 5. The victim believes they're in a hopeless situation and can't escape. Let's talk about the bank robbery. During the kidnapping, Olsen and Forsen placed bombs near the hostages and told them they'd explode if they tried to escape. Naturally, the hostages were too scared to try anything. This meets the second and fifth characteristics of Stockholm Syndrome. But why did the hostages think the kidnappers were good? In interviews later, the victims said the kidnappers were really nice to them during the standoff. If someone felt claustrophobic, the kidnapper would let them go to the window for fresh air. If someone was shaking, the kidnapper would give them a coat. These small acts of kindness were magnified in the victims' minds. They thought the kidnappers didn't want to kill them and even cared about their well-being. They believed the real bad guys were the police who were threatening the kidnappers. This covers the first, third, and fourth characteristics of Stockholm Syndrome. The victims identified with the reasons the kidnappers committed the crime. They felt an occasional small act of kindness from the kidnapper was a big deal. And they couldn't get information from the outside world other than what the kidnapper told them. When you string all five characteristics together, you get this strange psychological phenomenon. They completely ignored the most important fact of the incident. The criminals were there to rob the bank in the first place. It wasn't the police threatening the kidnappers. Their lives were threatened by a recent hijacking incident. From another psychological analysis perspective, some people think it's a phenomenon of emotional dependence, like a newborn baby. In a situation of extreme fear and despair, with no external information available and their life in the hands of another, a person might rely on the most powerful adult nearby just to survive. They might even become dependent on them, despite knowing they're a criminal. This is part of what's known as Stockholm Syndrome. But it's important to note that not all instances of Stockholm Syndrome are the same. It's a term used to describe a psychological phenomenon where a victim identifies with their captor, but it's not an official disease and isn't listed in the Diagnostic Manual of Mental Disorders, DSM. 
It's an abnormal psychological response that occurs because of a specific event, not because of Stockholm Syndrome itself. Don't worry though, not all, or even most, victims experience this phenomenon. According to FBI crisis incident data, 95% of victims don't develop Stockholm Syndrome. And it doesn't just occur in kidnapping cases. It can happen in real life too, like in unequal relationships or family dynamics where one party defends the offender even when they're being treated poorly. Stockholm Syndrome usually goes through four stages, fear due to a sudden change in circumstances, despair in an uneasy environment, sympathy for the captor who they believe is acting out of necessity, and finally, help either indirectly by cooperating with the captor or directly by assisting in their escape. Sometimes it's about breaking out of rigid thought patterns to see the world differently. So think about it. Do you see this happening in your own life? Leave a comment below. But before you go, check out these two videos you might also like. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share these interesting insights with your friends and family. Don't forget to hit the subscribe bell to get notified about new videos. This is the Dark Psychology World Channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.